I first started making this style of bath mat when my two youngest kids were teenagers. My kids would do when they would take a shower, they would, you know, use a towel for their hair, use a towel for their body, and they would always throw a towel on the floor, you know, to step on when they got out of the shower. Needless to say, we went through some towels. What we did was take a towel and put a real pretty binding around it so that way everyone knew, hey, this was the bath mat that goes on the floor. Do not put any of the other towels on the floor. Well, it totally became a thing in my house. You know, there was a rotation of those floor towels and they were only the ones with the binding on it. Those were the only ones that you were allowed to step on when you got out of the shower. And I still do it to this day. Hi friends, Tracy here from the Sewing Channel. I've got a great project for you today. Use up those jelly rolls that you might not like the color of. Mm -hmm. Remember, my mom gave me her old pre-cut stash and this was one of them and it really wasn't one of my favorite colorways at all. Enough talking already, let's get busy. One thing I do know about jelly rolls, even though I don't buy them often, you do have to have a lint brush handy because all of those cut edges right there can get all over. And you can see there, I got quite a bit off there already. It does lift up that thread too a little bit. But yeah, we got quite a bit off. That way it just doesn't, you know, fly everywhere in your sewing room. So let's take a look here and see exactly the colors that are in here. So what you'll need for today's project is some bath towels and some jelly rolls, of course. Now my bath towels measure 30 inches by 54 inches, and I believe I bought these at the Dollar General, and they were around like $6, but I bought them like, I don't know, a year and a half ago because I thought I was going to do them a year and a half ago. Well, yeah, no. So we're doing them today. <laughs> so I made a bunch of these bath mats probably 10 years ago. We use these every time we step out of the bathtub. And then we just hang it up on the side of the tub and we use it for probably, I don't know, three or four uses. And then I throw them in the wash and then grab a new one out that gets in the rotation. Well, these are getting pretty worn. I mean, the, this color, I don't know if you can see it, but it was a really pretty fabric, but it was just, you know, wearing it out. It wasn't that big. So you can see this bath mat probably measures a 32 by 28-ish. So my husband, he was like, babe, next time you make those bath mats, can you make them a little bigger for me? Cause you know, I like to lay it out and you know, my husband's not shy when it comes to using powder up in the bathroom. So yeah, I told him, of course I'll make you some extra large bath mats. <laughs> I didn't just want one or two colors to go around the bath mat. So I decided just to, you know, make it a little more scrappy. For my bath mat, I needed five jelly roll strips cut in half and one of the halves I did not use for each of the bath mats. So you'll just simply take it where it's creased at and just, you know, snip it in half. <laughs> and I did try to go light, dark, light, dark, you know, in the placement. So, so here is all of my colors that I'm going to use. So I used one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine jelly roll strip halves. Take one strip and place it face up, pretty side up. And then you're going to take another strip and connect it this way, right side down or pretty side down. What I try to do is have a little bit hanging off on one side and another little bit hanging off on the other side. And I'm going to place the one edge of my ruler right here where this V shape is, where it all connects. And the other end of my ruler, I'm going to place right there on the other side where that V shape or L shape is right there. So I'm going to line it up here and line it up here and then I'm going to simply mark it. You can use a heat erasable pen or a pencil in this case because, you know, nobody's gonna see this. Put a pin on one side, 
and then pop a pin on the other side. But before I pop that pin in, I just wanna show you here. So when we go to sew on this line right here, we're going to start right there where that you know L shape is, come down here and come right out that other bottom V shape there. And then when you do that, you create a continuous binding strip. What I try to do is make the continuous binding strip, pin it all down at one time. So I just go to the sewing machine with all the pins in and all the markings, and then I just sew. In order to do it that way, everything is pinned right here. You need to make sure that you keep things straight. So you lift this one up over just as if it was, you know, sewn on. So now this one is right side up. You just wanna make sure that you don't want to get things twisted. Now you're going to lay this one right side down. Now if you have salvages that are exposed, make sure that those are well out of the area, so of the sewing area. You're going to put your ruler down and mark it from the bottom V shape to the other bottom V shape. And pop a couple pins. So you can see if I was to flip it like that, it's going to be connected nicely. Keep going and I'm gonna flip this one up and add the next one. Now you're just going to take it to your sewing machine and simply sew right on that line that you just made with the pencil. Go ahead and backstitch too when you're making the continuous binding like this. I just think it's good practice. You can see there, it makes a nice binding strip, right? Now you will know if you come to the wrong side to sew that line because the line won't be there. Remember, you put it all on the one side. So that's a good tip for you there to know that as long as you're sewing on that line, you're good to go. Once you have your big long jelly roll strip all sewn together, then you're going to simply come in and cut off all the excess. Where that stitch line is, you're going to come up about a quarter inch and you're just going to trim all that excess off. There will be little dog ears here that need to be cut off as well. And then when you open it up, it's all nice, nice. So I will just continue to just trim all this. Now you can absolutely use your rotary cutter and a ruler if you like, if you feel more comfortable with that. But I'm just eyeballing this right here at my table and you know, easy peasy. And I'm just gonna trim off the dog ears. Next, I'm going to open up all of the seam allowances and I'm going to press them open. The reason why I like to press any binding open um, when I have a continuous strip like this is because this is going to create bulk if I let it go to one side or the other side. So I just want to make sure that everything is, you know, nice and evenly dispersed as far as bulk goes. Bring your whole strip set over to your ironing station and you're going to fold it right in half first and make a nice crease right there. And you're going to do this all the way down through the entire thing. And you can see I pre-creased that before I turn my camera on. Once you have that first crease folded just like so, then you're going to take one side and fold it up toward that crease that you made. And you're going to put a hot press. This measures about a half an inch there too. So 
So once you go down this entire strip and fold that one side in at a half an inch, then you're going to flip over to the other side like so. Now you have, remember you have the half and then you have this one coming in. Now you're going to come in from this side a half an inch or to the center there and put a hot crease right there. And you're gonna go down the entire strip. Once you get this whole side nice and pressed, then you're going to simply fold everything in like so, and then fold it, and then give it a good just for GP press all the way through. And then you should have something that looks like this. So here's one that I've already sewn up all of the binding on here. And I just wanted to show you this one because on the end here, there is this thick towel binding that they use right along there. And I kept it on here with this one, but I think for this one, I'm going to cut it off because it was just too much on the edge there when it came to mitering these corners. So you may want to take a look at that on your towels if you decide to do it, whether or not it could be too much bulk or For not. For this one, I'm simply going to just cut right up to where that binding sits on this towel. What they did was just like fold it over and stitch it down. So I'm just going to cut that entire thing off. I'm going to stay close to this side over here so that I don't you know, take any more than I really need to. And if you just cut straight across, you should be fine. Now, as far as this binding right here that they did along the side, it's really super small and thin. So we're not even gonna worry about that binding. We're just going to cut off one end and the other end. As a side note, I have rounded the corners on my bath mats before. The ones that I did like 10 years ago, they were totally rounded and it worked out beautifully. But for this one, I'm gonna miter the corners on here and you know, show you how to do it that way. You're going to leave about up to 10 inches slack in here. So this will just kind of be hanging around. We're not gonna sew this down to begin with. We're gonna start sewing here. So that way it's going to be really easy to connect. And I'm going to try a new viral binding hack for connecting these two pieces together. So you'll wanna stay for that. Open your binding up and take the right side and just lay it down on either side. It doesn't matter of your towel. And then just pop a clip right there. Now it's very important that you know of where we put the creases at because that first crease that's closest to the edge that's what we're going to be sewing down on that is approximately half inch in from the edge so we're going to start here and i'm going to show you how to miter the corners and do that viral binding connection hack and and you're going to know it all by the end so just keep everything opened up and then follow along that first crease that you made that's about a half an inch in from the edge. And you're lining up the edge of the fabric with the edge of this towel too. Don't pull or anything or tug. You're just gonna nicely lay it down just like you would a quilt binding. Put a back stitch in. You're going to come about a half an inch away from the edge of this fabric. Lift your presser foot while still keeping the needle in. Pivot your fabric so that you are looking at the corner of your fabric here. And you're going to run right off the fabric to that corner at a 45. Hopefully you can see that I ran right off the corner. Lift your binding up and over this way. Make sure it's open so that nothing gets caught and you're just going to lay it straight just so that all those edges are nice and straight across. Then you're going to put your hand here and flip it this way. Then you're going to pinch that down, pull your hand out. And you can clip this right here if you want. 
but I just want you to see there what that is. That's that fold mark and it's right along the edge there. So we lifted straight over this way and then flipped it back onto itself. Now we're going to pivot this towel again. <laughs> we're going to line up this raw edge now along the edge of the towel. And we're going to come in a half an inch. You can see where that crease is that we made right there. And I am going to put a back stitch there because I want it to stay. <laughs> and I can take the clip out. Now when you come up to the next corner, you're going to go up about a half an inch from that corner. If we were doing a quarter inch stitch along the edge, we would come a quarter inch from the end. But now we're doing a half an inch seam allowance, so we've got to do a half an inch from the corner. Lift up, pivot your fabric, your towel, or you know, whatever, your quilt. <laughs> Put your presser foot back down, and now sew right off the corner. Sewn right off the corner. Now I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to lift this up this way. I have a straight line right here. I want that nice and straight. Put my hand here to hold this. Then I'm gonna flip it back this way onto itself. Make sure the fold is right here at the edge. Press that down. Straighten things up. Pop a clip here so you can see. So it's folded right back down onto itself. And we're bringing it straight this way now along this edge. We're gonna pivot. Make sure you drop your needle right where that crease is. Backstitch and keep going. So here's the point where I'm going to show you that viral binding hack, the connection part, which is totally mind blowing to me. I did not know it existed, but Evidently it did. So you can see it's connected there and it's connected there. So somewhere in here is where you want to fold and meet them up. So I'm gonna just simply lay this one down on you know this side here and fold it back onto itself. So wrong side onto wrong side. And I'm going to do the same thing with this one. Line it up nice and then fold it back. Here's one of the keys to this binding technique right here, the connection part. You need to leave yourself a quarter of an inch between folds right there. So that's about a quarter of an inch. So where I fold it, I'm going to just give that a press. So those are pressed. <laughs> Lift this like so and flip it like that. So the crease that I made with that quarter inch in between is this crease right here. So I marked it so you could see it really good. And there is a plus sign. So now for this one over here, and I'm going to mark where that crease was here. And I'm gonna mark where that crease was that I when I initially made. So this right here is the center. That plus sign and that plus sign, center, center. But this one I wrote on the back of the binding. Lift these out like so. Let's bunch this up. Clip this right there so that kind of holds that together. So this plus sign right there. And then this plus sign, even though it's on the back side, I need to connect these two together. I'm gonna bring this over like this. So without twisting anything, nothing is twisted. We can see that these are both the right sides, right? So this one is going to lay right side up. And then of course, this one has to lay right side down. Well, you need to figure out where that plus is. So that plus is right here, that center of that plus, right? And it's sticking out right there. So what I'm gonna do is take my pin and I'm going to pin right there. And I can even stick it down into my wool mat just until I can get it straight. So my pin is right through both of those. Now I'm going to angle these just like I did when I first made the binding, right? So from this end to this end, I need to make a mark. From that corner to that corner is where I'm going to mark.
Now before I take that pin out of there, I'm going to definitely pin these two together just like it is. Once I have those two pinned, then I can take that one out. And if I look under there, I should be plus sign to plus sign right in the center and it is. What we're going to do is take this over to the sewing machine and sew right along that line. So I want you to see there I sewed right along that red line. Those pieces are together. So now I'm going to take these pins out and before I cut anything I'm going to check and make sure that my proportions are indeed correct. So when I lift it like so you can see already that it kind of went like that right? So when I go to look at it from this angle, I can see that that is perfect all along there. So I know I'm good to cut. If it was too tight or too loose, then I would have to go in and unpick and redo that. So now all I'm going to do is just cut a quarter inch seam allowance right there and cut those off. And then I'm going to open up this seam allowance just like I did when I initially made all of the other, you know, connections with the binding. And now I may need to recrease some of this because I, you know, pressed out the initial crease I made when I, you know, connected those two where there was a quarter inch in between. So I'm just going to remake these little lines here. You can cut off these dog ears too. So now all we have to do is just continue along that half inch seam allowance and connect it until we get back to where we started from. So I just sewed that all along there and you can see there's nothing pulling and nothing slacking. That, that my friends is my new way of doing binding for sure. So to finish this off you're going to flip the binding so that you can wrap it around. We're going to flip it where the corners are too you know, make sure there's no gap there. Pull it, make sure it's all pulled out. And then you're going to flip this down and then give it a little tug and lift it around. And then you're going to sew right along the edge all along there. You can go ahead and pop some clips or pins, you know, if you like. So I'm making sure that that initial you know, half inch fold there is there, and then I'm wrapping it around to the back. Or this might be the front, I don't know. And you're going to sew right along there. When it comes to these corners, you're going to make sure that, you know, your towel corner is, you know, pushed all the way to the corner. And then you're going to do the same thing. You're going to make sure that that, you know, fold is at a half an inch. You're going to look over here and see which way this fold is going. Now the fold opens up over here, so we want the fold open up on the opposite end on the other side and that helps us with bulk. So it's going to be this way first and then you're going to bring this down like so. And you can see on this side what that looks like. And then you're just going to simply, you know, come up to that intersection, stop there, pivot, and go all the way around. When you get to this point, you're going to fold this side in and then this one over. Look at that, friends. That corner looks amazing, right? Absolutely beautiful. And yours will too. <laughs> Until next time on the sewing channel, take care.